Hey guys, welcome to episode number 574. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday, and we're outside with the pond and the greenhouse. As you can see, there's still a little bit of snow on the ground, but I am anxious to get started on pond season and greenhouse season. But before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and if you haven't already, go check out myaquariumbox.com and bettaoasis.com if you wanna help support this channel. All right, let's go take a look at the pond, let's see how it did throughout the winter, and let's do the same with the greenhouse, and then we can talk a little bit about what my plans are this year. This is the first full year of having the greenhouse operational with the pond. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, folks, as you can see, winter in New England is not quite done. We still have some snow on the ground, although it was warm enough earlier in the week for me to put some giant footprints into the mud. So I'm sure it'll take a few weeks for all of this to melt back and for the ground to, um, you know, get a little bit less sloppy. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the pond and how it did throughout the winter. Now, as you can see, we've got a green coloration in the pond. I think there's um, some nutrients in there that haven't been addressed. It was a very young body of water when it went down for the winter. And so it does look like some algae is thriving in here. And I'm wondering if that's because of too much nutrients, if it may be partly because the water temperature is actually quite a bit warmer than the surrounding area, so the algae is able to survive. Part of that might be due to the fact that I've insulated this really well. And uh, a really good sign of that is actually the fact that there's still quite a bit of snow uh, around this pond itself. That means that the cold air isn't penetrating the ground. It means the warm, um, the warmth from that pond isn't rising up through the ground either. So hopefully that means the fish that I put in here last fall are still alive. I won't really be able to tell here for another few weeks until I'm able to do a little bit of a water change here, clear this water up, uh, maybe put some sort of algicide in here or something so that I can start to see down all the way to the bottom uh, of this pond. The other thing you may note is our aeration. It's going really strong. It's only a couple feet deep and that worked throughout the entire winter. It got really cold this winter. I probably had a good foot of ice built up on the surface of this pond, but I always had a hole uh, in the middle with this air stone. Now, the annoying noise that you hear is actually like a bleed valve for that airline that I had to put in here sort of temporarily, um, just using some, some random fittings that I had sitting around. It's not the nicest solution. I'll probably move this uh, indoors, the bleed valve uh, indoors for next year. I just didn't have the right parts on hand to uh, have like a T and a couple different ball valves to release some of that pressure because as you can see, uh, we're getting a pretty good uh, roiling bubble here. So um, it was way too strong when it was all the way turned up. But we did put our pump back in this pond. We're not gonna turn the pump on for at least another week uh, because we are still experiencing freezing temperatures at night. So uh, it's warming up plenty in the day. It's getting into the upper 40s or 50s, but uh, at nighttime it's still dropping into freezing temps. So we'll wait a little bit while longer uh, before we turn the pump on and get water flowing through this system. But this is a look at outside of the pond. Obviously we're gonna need to do some raking of leaves and some pruning of our new bushes that are in, but uh, this whole area has just been underneath snow for the past two or three months. So this will be a nice summer cleanup or spring cleanup project um, once this snow does melt off. All right, let's go take a look inside our greenhouse to see how that did. All right, guys, we are inside the greenhouse. 
I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do in here before we take a look. Most notably, this beam down the center, I need to remove that. I think it did a great job throughout the winter at keeping the snow load supported on the top of that roof. If you want to go take a look at me installing this beam, you can go look at my past videos back in the fall. But let's take this beam out. There's no more snow on the way. The roof is clear. It's actually pretty warm in here. It's probably about 20 or 30 degrees warmer in the greenhouse than it is outside. So let's clean up a little bit and then we'll talk about what's in store for the greenhouse. guys and here is our greenhouse after it has survived the winter now it was way too cold of a winter to actually try to heat this greenhouse in New England so I basically just left it to the elements and uh, as you can see we drained all of the water in all of our tubs and the only thing that's living in here are just some of our juniper shrubs that we're planning to try to pot and turn into little baby bonsais this year. So I'm really looking forward to that project sometime this summer uh, or maybe the spring and I'm happy that they survived throughout the winter. They're tough little things and um, you know they actually had a better time in here than their cousins did uh, outside in the cold because it did stay pretty dang warm in here even in the dead of winter when it was like you know negative degrees outside it was still like you know 20 30 degrees in here so it it kept the sunlight and it kept the uh the heat in this greenhouse so it really did work fairly well but it would have been a waste of time and energy and money to try to keep this heated throughout the winter so that i could grow things throughout the winter. So I'm pretty happy with my decision to shut it down uh, for the winter, but now we're ready to get it back online and operational. Now, one quick note, uh, Sarah actually sent me three nets. This is not a sponsored video, but Sarah did send me three nets and I'm hoping to use these in the greenhouse and out in the pond this year. I didn't even realize that they made nets, but I guess they do, and uh, this one looks like it'd be a good net to scoop in these 60 gallon Laguna tubs. Uh, good size, good reach, I can get all the way to the back without uh, even having to try, which is good. We've got a gigantic, what looks like a koi net. So I don't have any fish nearly this big, but last year I didn't have a way to catch the fish that are in my 1000 gallon pond. So this should do a pretty good job at catching those goldfish if I ever need to. So really cool. Hopefully I'll grow into that because yeah, it's way too big. I mean the fish I have in there, they're only like six inches long. This thing could catch like a two foot fish. Uh, and the last one here looks like it is a leaf net, which I do have one of these, but this one is quite a bit bigger and it looks like it's higher quality than the one I have. So. I'll probably be using all three of these out here in the pond and in the greenhouse this year. So pretty excited about that. We do have these uh, plastic shelving units. Um, I do have the poles to them as well. So I could make it into like a, 
uh, a shelf if I wanted to. But as it is now, I just have these three sort of levels set out here. And I thought I might use one of these to uh, put all of my terrestrial plants and other things on top of the uh, grow beds. Um, not all of these are going to have plants growing in them. Some of them are going to have fish. So I figured this would be a nice way to add some additional real estate so I can put stuff on top and I can have fish uh, and like floating plants and stuff growing down below uh, in at least two or three of these bins. I do have six of them in total and my current plan is to take these three that are closest to the back of the greenhouse and utilize those for fish, for growing fish. Um, I'm thinking if I can move out some anglers, maybe some crayfish, I don't know, maybe some cooler weather species that would do well, um, you know, starting in the early spring and lasting until the late fall. I think it would be interesting to grow some like fish out here uh, in the greenhouse and just see how they do. I know that uh, Rachel O'Leary grows fish in her greenhouse. I know that uh, Michael from Michael's Fish Room grows a lot of uh, like guppies outdoors in tubs uh, in the summer as well. And so I'm sort of curious what I can accomplish in terms of growth and numbers uh, out here. Like if I toss a handful of guppies or a handful of endlers in one of these, how many am I going to have at the end of the year? Is it going to be hundreds? I don't know, but I think it would be cool to experiment and to find out. Um, the other reason I'm considering these three tubs for fish is that they don't get quite as much sunlight throughout the year as these three do on the end here. So these three are the ones that I'm going to set up aquaponics style and I'm going to grow um, plants, uh, vegetables. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe lettuce, maybe basil, maybe tomatoes, uh, maybe peppers. I don't really know, but it's going to be some combination of those. I think I probably have enough space for up to six varieties of vegetables. And I'm planning to do like a deep water culture bed. So I'm going to take a sheet of styrofoam with little holes for all of my net pots and I'm going to plant individual plants in all of the little net pots and allow those to grow, allow the roots to be in the water submerged um, all of the time and hopefully I get good growth, they get enough light, they get enough nutrients and I get some vegetables at the end of the year. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, I've gotten a lot of comments as well about the construction of this stand and a lot of people are concerned about uh, two things. They're concerned about the bowing on these boards and they were concerned about the placement or the orientation of these blocks. And as I can see right now, I mean, these tubs have been empty for four months. So there's really going to be no bowing at all on these, but I will be watching throughout the year especially as it gets hot and humid in here, to see if there is any bowing um, on these boards. There may be a little bit, but these are not glass aquariums and there are really no pressure points in order to break uh, or snap. They are poly tanks, plastic tanks. They're not gonna leak. And even if things aren't quite level, they'll do just fine. So uh, I think the combination of draining these throughout the winter and then filling them up it probably won't bow uh, as much as people think, but time will tell. And if it does, we'll figure out a better way to do it. Um, I have built sh like shelf units by just flipping the boards the other way, putting plywood over the top, and those are very sturdy. So we might end up doing something like that if we need to. The other concern was these blocks. People were saying that they're a lot stronger when they're placed the way that they're intended, which has the holes facing up instead of the holes facing sideways. And that's absolutely true. If you're building a building that has tens, hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, supporting it, you definitely don't want to build it like this. But for this, there's not a whole lot of weight up above it. It's only three blocks high. And what I want to do is have the ability to run boards through these holes to create uh, shelving units underneath 
um, all of these tubs if I ever have a need for additional shelving. So I was just trying to think ahead there and plan accordingly so that I could maximize the space that I have available in this greenhouse. Now, talking about space, let's back up and get a good view of this greenhouse because the Gambrel style roof gives us a lot of head height up above this greenhouse. In fact, if I was to try to reach, I can't even come close to touching the top of the ceiling. So we got a lot of head height in this greenhouse and we are not utilizing the amount of space effectively just yet. But I expect we will grow into this greenhouse over time and continue to add things over time to help us fill out some of this space. And what I was thinking of doing is maybe trying some potted plants, um, like vine type plants, whether they're string beans or something else that I could sort of grow up and over towards the middle of the greenhouse. I think that would be pretty cool. I'd be able to keep you know, all the pots uh, off to the side so they're out of the way, but we would have sort of more growth taking up more of this space. The other thing I had thought about was um, potentially putting some sort of aquariums uh, up here towards the back as well. I don't think I would want anything very large or heavy, but if I did have small tanks that I could somehow plumb and circulate in with these bins uh, in a very simple way, I think that would be a cool way to add some additional um, space to the inside of this greenhouse for doing fun projects, whether it's uh, like selectively breeding some fish outdoors um, or just keeping additional species sort of contained in smaller volumes, uh, I think that would be cool. Now, as you can see, we have a layer of slime and dirty water on the bottoms of these tubs. This has been sitting all winter long and this needs to be cleaned out before we start uh, we start pumping water back into these tubs. These tubs basically acted as giant settling ponds throughout the fall last year as I was cycling the system. And as you can see, the water enters from our nozzle here. It sort of uh, spins around on the inside of this tub. The water slows down dramatically and all of those solids settle out down to the bottom and the clear water goes over the overflow and back to the pond. So a lot of our solids ended up in these tubs. That does need to get wiped out, cleaned out, and it probably is something that's gonna have to happen on a yearly basis unless I install some sort of um, mechanical filter which is able to catch more of these fine particles. You can see it just looks like mud once it's sort of dried out, but this isn't too bad. This is uh, like you know, two or three months of operation and uh, it doesn't quite cover the bottom uh, of these tubs. So it's something I'll have to keep up with. I don't think it's gonna add um, too much in the realm of nutrients or any problems to these tubs throughout the year. And as long as I clean it out once a year, I think it'll be just fine. So one piece of damage we do need to talk about very quickly is over here. We had a lot of snow. We had a big storm, big, uh, like heavy, wet snow. We had at least a foot, maybe a foot and a half of snow on the top of this roof. And what happened was this section of roof, because it has such a nice slope, all of that snow was able to fall off. However, the snow up on the tippy top part of this roof did not. And so it sat up there for about a week and then it got really warm one day and then it got really cold the next day. And what happened was that entire sheet slid off and then it sort of like landed and then it stuck and it froze back in place down here. And so what I think happened was I didn't latch this latch the correct way and it was able to sort of pop itself out and you can see we've got some bending to our aluminum frame there 
on our window, but I was able to just move the whole assembly over into a section that's not damaged and it's really no worse for wear. Uh, if I needed to, I could replace that one piece, but it's not even worth it, not yet. Uh, so that was the only noticeable damage to this whole thing that I could see throughout an entire winter in New England. So not too bad. Now, we've got some driftwood out here. We've got some aquascaping stone out here. And this is something that is definitely a work in progress. I need to clean this section up. I need to find a way to sort of build the walls up so I can store more stuff out here. Maybe install some sort of racking system so I can install you know, more material um, up vertically in this area because as you can see, it too is not being very well utilized. I'm actually gonna take all of the driftwood inside because I noticed last year that this was staying pretty humid. There are no um, windows, there are no um, fans or vents to keep this thing ventilated throughout the summer months. The only thing I can do is open these windows manually while I'm around. But when I'm not around, it gets really humid in here, as you can imagine. Uh, with the water and the very warm air that's trapped in this greenhouse and a lot of the wood I was just seeing like water droplets raining down from the ceiling of the greenhouse and I'm sure that's just uh, soaking into the wood it makes the wood way more and uh, there's a chance that if it gets too saturated it could mold or something like that and obviously I don't want that so uh, we're going to take all the driftwood inside, let that dry out completely, and then we'll just keep the, uh, the non-porous stuff, all the rock, uh, out here and uh, easy to access. So, if you want to check out some of this rock, you can always go check out myaquariumbox.com. Otherwise, we're going to be working on this section because there's a lot more space to be utilized over here. Alright guys, that is a look at the inside of the greenhouse. We've got our air pump situated on the back side of this greenhouse right now. I actually turned it off for the video because it does make some noise. It's not super loud, but this is a Gemco linear piston air pump. It did an amazing job here throughout the winter and uh, it was able to run two big air stones into the thousand gallon pond with no problem. Actually, it was a little too strong. So this thing is probably going to move indoors for the summer. If I have the need for a lot of air inside the greenhouse and inside these tubs, I may keep it set up, but I'll probably move it up towards the rafters a little bit. And in the meantime, once it warms up enough, next week probably, I'll just turn on the pump. The water pump is already in the pond. The power line's already fed underneath the ground, and all I need to do is plug it in. So we've got our filter that's sitting mostly empty off to the side. We've got our electrical line temporarily run throughout the back of this greenhouse. And once the ground thaws enough, I'm planning on digging a trench all the way to the house to get a buried electrical line out here to the greenhouse. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the cleanup of this greenhouse, filling everything up, getting some fish out here, getting some plants out here. I'm super excited. This is the start of pond and greenhouse season. Doesn't look like a whole lot yet, but I'm sure you can agree there is tons of potential here. All right, guys, now let's sit down for a minute, take a load off, and just talk. I have a new space to talk in, the greenhouse. We can talk as much as we want out here about weird and nerdy fish stuff, and I'm gonna take full opportunity of that throughout this summer. Now, two weeks ago, I posted a video about massive seed pods. I talked a lot about a lot of different types of pods that we're bringing in through my aquarium box. 
I also offered someone a free pod. All they had to do was leave a comment in that video. If you did that, you were automatically entered to win the pod of your choice. And the random winner of the pods is Ian McCain. So Ian, all you have to do is send me a private message and we will send you your seed pods to you. I think you chose the jungle pods. So those ones are a little small. We'll probably send you like six or eight of those. So Ian McCain, send me a private message and we'll get you taken care of. All right, it's still a little chilly out here, I must admit, and the sun is going down. So I'm not comfortable turning the water on in these tubs just yet. We might need to wait a week, maybe two weeks before we do that. We're gonna have to leak check everything to make sure it's running okay. And then once the ground thaws, we're gonna dig that trench. We're gonna get the electrical in long term and get rid of the extension cord because that's a tripping hazard, it's a fire hazard. It's not something that's meant to be used long term. It served its purpose throughout the winter though, so I was pretty happy about that. All right guys, so if you have any ideas on plants or vegetables that you think I should start with out here in these 60 gallon Laguna tubs, let me know. I did a chop and flip video, um, I think it was two years ago, 55 gallon chop and flip barrel. I was successful at growing some herbs and some lettuce. I wanna try something a little bit more challenging this year. So if you know of anything that works uh, in a, like a deep water culture and you think I should try it out, let me know. Also, because I'm going to be growing fish out here, definitely let me know what your suggestions are on cold tolerant fish that I can grow out here in like a colony type setting in these 60 gallon tubs. Ideally, I have three species and three tubs to work with. So that will be fun as well. I think uh, I'm going to try endlers for sure because I do have those. They're not cold tolerant at all. So those are gonna be just like a strictly summer only type of fish. But I do think they will thrive out here in the few months that it stays warm enough to keep them out here. So I've got two more tubs to go. Let me know what your thoughts are on those tubs. All right, we've got some events coming up here in the very near future that you guys should be aware of. If you haven't been to the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island, they are having an auction next, I think it's Saturday. So go check out their Facebook page, go check out their website. If you live within proximity of Rhode Island, it's definitely worth going. I have some videos uh, from last year on some of their auctions and they usually have a really good turnout. So that one will be fun. I'm hoping to be there. And the event that I definitely 100% will be attending is the NEC this spring. It's in April, it's in the, like the middle of April. So if you guys live anywhere in the Northeast, the NEC or the Northeast Council of Aquarium Societies is a awesome organization. They are basically the umbrella organization that keeps track of all the individual aquarium clubs in the Northeast area and they do a great job at informing people about when events are happening in your area. So definitely go check out the NEC's website and their Facebook page, the Northeast Council of Aquarium Society. They have a annual convention coming up in April. I'll be there. They'll have a giant vendor room. I've been there the past few years. It's great. It's an awesome experience. You get to walk around, talk to a bunch of people, buy a bunch of stuff, save a lot of money. Um, they have a program of events running Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I believe. And then at the very end of the weekend on Sunday, they have a giant fish auction. It's basically the biggest one in the New England area. And if you are going to go to one fish auction in the New England area all year long, that's the one to go to. So even if you can't get the whole weekend off, even if you can't be there for the whole thing, make sure you're there in time for the auction. It's great. You can find so much stuff. 
and you can save a lot of money in the process. If you've been breeding fish all winter long and you don't know what to do with all of these fish because you have so many fish, you have so many plants, you have so many invertebrates, snails, duckweed, whatever you want, bag it up, make sure it's double bagged, but bag it up and bring it to the big Sunday auction at the NEC's annual convention. I'll be there. We'll have a My Aquarium Box booth set up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope to see you guys there. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. We had a lot of fun out here in the greenhouse. I'm super excited to get water going in the greenhouse once again, set it all up. It was such a tease to build this entire thing last year and then not have a chance to actually enjoy it. So this is the year we are going to spend a lot of time out here talking, looking at things, growing things. It's going to be great. So that is the very beginning of the greenhouse series for this year. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you like this content, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, you can always go check out myaquariumbox.com and betaoasis.com. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.